Broke Podcast. I'm Hannah Lisa, your host for today and always. And as usually, I am coming to you from my living room in Berlin. And it's a little bit gloomy. Summer has not been too kind to us. We've had lots and lots of rain here in Germany. And uh, I don't mind the rain, but honestly, we spent about like two evenings on the balcony the entire summer. And I would really, really like to get a little bit more outside. But oh well, what can you do? Hashtag first world problems, honestly. <laughs> so if you want to find more about me, go to my Instagram account, which is Hannah on the Road, and you can also find me under that name on Facebook and Reverie. And the Reverie group that we're, sorry, I was, the, the words are not coming to me today. We also have a rivalry group that you can also find if you're searching for Hannah on the Road under the groups tag and that is where we're working on Celts and doing lots of fun things and I am going to talk about one new fun thing in a second. Show notes as always can be found on the blog which you can find on my website hannalisahafakamp.com and all of the things will also appear in a little handy bar below and you can find the direct link to the show notes in the down bar below. I think that is everything with regards, with regards to administration. Let me take a look at my cheat sheet. Yes, that's it. Alrighty, let's start this episode 18 with a super, super fun thing, which is a giveaway. So I will open up a thread in the rivalry group for this giveaway that is super generously sponsored by the amazing Alex. Alex is an illustrator based in the US but with strong Estonian roots and you might have seen her work appear on my podcast before because Alex actually gifted me a few of her amazing knitting postcards. Just look at these. Aren't they cool? And these two are actually for one of you guys. So you can win them in addition to one of Alex's newest products which is this amazing black tote bag with this super cool design like abstract mittens print which I just absolutely love and there's actually a little hand sewn tags in here Alex Burr and thank you so much for sponsoring this giveaway Alex I'm super super thrilled because it's actually I think the first giveaway that anyone has ever sponsored on the podcast uh, on the podcast that's not related to a cal or anything so I'm so happy about it. So you guys can win this. What do you need to do in order to win? Um, you need to go to the Reverie group and you need to um, be a member of the Reverie group and subscribe to this podcast. Super easy. Just hit the subscribe button below and then there will be a thread in the Reverie group for the giveaway with a little prompt and the prompt will be to tell someone what you love about them because I think we're not telling each other that enough. So I would love to hear who has had a big impact on you or maybe even just a small impact, someone who smiled at you and who made your day, you know, quite recently or I don't know, in the bigger scope of things. And I think, I don't know, I, I just really hope that this is going to be such a fun, inspiring giveaway thread. The giveaway is going to be open until the end of August 7th and I will announce the giveaway winner in my next podcast episode. Alex, thank you so much again for sponsoring this. This is amazing. And guys, you need to check out her Instagram because she's been doing quite amazing color work and illustration things. Really seriously good. Yay! Alrighty, let's get on with more making stuff. We're in the middle of the first part of this podcast already and I haven't even announced that we're talking about making, but I guess you guys figured that out already, right? Okay, let's talk about the second thing related to the Reverie group, which is our current knit along. I am hosting the Linen Cal, hashtag Linen Cal, a knit along that runs until the end of August and you can knit anything and everything with linen or linen blends. And we have quite a lot of FOs already. I opened an FO thread in the Reverie group, but I noticed that Quite a lot of you also posted their FOs in the chatter thread. Make sure to also enter them in the FO thread because I will be drawing prizes from both threads, right? I love how many people are getting 
on the bandwagon of knitting with linen still now and honestly there's still more than enough time it's not even the end of july and you can whip out something small or even something big honestly like a linen tea in a month no problem so do join us over there i would love to see you let me check my oops my cheat sheets then ooh, let's talk works in progress so um i have one I honestly, I've been almost monogamously knitting on one thing these past two weeks. There's a reason for that because there's a deadline for it. It's a test knit. Um, I've put in a few rows in my SCUA socks, but not enough that I would want to show them. But let me show you what I did work on. Living in one of my own project bags. Honestly, if you've been curious to see how, because like I, I know a few people have approached me and asked like is is the big size really large enough of a sweater for a sweater size m women's sweater almost done spoiler alert fits comfortably in here with an additional skein of yarn and a paper pattern right okay now that you guys think that i'm scheming you or anything it really this is a sweater size bag trust me this is proof okay you want to see the sweater I don't care if you want to see the sweater. I want to show you the sweater. Du, 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 du. Oops. Tangling. Yay! Look at this, guys. Last time that we talked, I hadn't even separated the sleeves. I was about like somewhere here. Oops, there's like hair all over this thing. And now the body is done and one sleeve is done and the only reason why this isn't done is because I was knitting the sleeve on the train yesterday and I wanted to try it on before I started the ribbing. I am about at the like at the length that where I should start the ribbing but I wanted to make extra sure but I didn't want to undress myself in the train so yeah. This pattern is the Sauva Balance sweater by Jessica Gore which is one of the patterns for Woods and the reason why this is in the test knit um, now is because we pulled actually one design from the book and put this one in instead and I'm so happy with this. It's a top down raglan with a cabled front and a stockinette bag and this is going to be my go to sweater in winter. I can already tell that. It's knit in Lana Rara in the natural colorway. This is a skin and I love it. And this thing, honestly this yard, I mean first of all it's gorgeous right and it's made from rare swiss sheep breeds so this makes it even extra special but this is this is an absolute wonder because and you guys are not going to believe this this entire sweater until now took two and a half skeins maybe even close to three but like it's nothing maybe even two Okay, I should have weighed this before because I now I can't remember and I'm all confused. But honestly, I was able to knit, it must have been two, because I was able to knit until here with one skein. Okay, gorgeous. Woods is coming out on November 4th. By the way, if you want to pre-order a copy of the first print edition, you only have until July 31st. If you want to make absolutely 100% sure that you get the book in time, okay? Um, one fun thing that I wanted to talk about with this sweater is that I am for the first time ever using mini circulars for a sleeve and I'm completely in love with it. This sleeve took me a day or so, like a day of knitting time, I don't know how many hours, but it's super fun and it just flies off the needles. Um, those are Haya Haya Sharps because I needed four millimeters and those were the only ones that I could find on Amazon. Um, I do think that the Adi Sockenwunder that I've been using and recommending in the past also come in 4 millimeters, but at least it's what their website says, but I couldn't find them on Amazon and I didn't have time to wait for any other delivery. So, hi how sharps it is and I'm very, very happy with them. Alrighty. So, Babylon, Jessica Gore, In Woods, love it. To make up for the lack of knitting progress, I actually thought I would show you my current sewing work in progress. Now you might be like, what? 
you haven't talked about sewing in a long time. I know, I know. I actually have a full fabric stash downstairs that I need to get to. And I proudly present an almost finished boxy tee. Yay! So let's talk about this. Um, I have quite a lot of fabrics downstairs that are destined to become tops because I live in tops, like shirts and stuff. And this is a 100% linen remnant that I just picked up at my usual fabric store for I think like four euros or something sometime last year. And I knew that I wanted to make a, um, like a boxy, boxy tee with it. And then I went on a pattern hunt and there's actually a super, super cool free pattern, so to say, by Pearl Soho. I think you can find it under boxy tee three ways. And it has, well, three ways of making a, a boxy tee. Um, and I chose the variation that is depicted in the pattern with contrasting, sort of like sleeve. I have no idea how you call them because I'm just learning how to sew garments. So these thingies, right? Sleeve bands or something. Um, it, it was super, super fun. And I love the little details. Like you have the sleeve bands and then you have like a little additional band here. And the only thing that's left for me to do is making continuous bias tape out of the same fabric. and finishing the neckline with this, um, which I've been putting off for weeks. Yeah, maybe tonight. Pearl Soho Boxy Tea, highly recommend it, and I want to make a thousand more of those. Yay! Cheat cheat. Okay, um, let's do a little bit of switcheroo. So I, before we dive into shop news and recommendation and the business part, I want to address a question that I had on uh, one of the comments of a previous podcast episode. And the question is actually by one of my patrons, by Carmen. And Carmen asked, are you inspired by German culture or are there German brands that you really love? I lived in Germany for eight years and really miss it sometimes. And I was inspired to answer that question I would have answered it anyways, but extra inspired because I listened to Melanie Burke's interview on the Woolful podcast yesterday. And she also got the question and whether she's inspired by German knitting culture. And I loved her answer. And I am 100% like aligned with her answer. And I don't think I'm inspired by German knitting culture, honestly. Um, and I think part of that is because we, I feel like a lot of us, especially younger knitters in Germany, have the same history where our parents, or our moms better, uh, they knit a lot and then they stopped. When I was visiting my parents over the weekend, it was super funny because um, they had friends over and I was knitting and um, my mom's friend said, oh, like I used to knit a lot, but then I completely stopped. Like we used to knit all the time at university and in the lectures and, and my mom was like, yeah, we did that. And then I don't know, we, we just stopped. And I've heard that story over and over and over again. So our moms knit and my mom knit like amazing Norwegian sweaters and all kinds of stuff and then just stopped. And I think mm, that's a story that's probably, I don't know, probably not unique to me, but I think one of the things why I'm not really inspired by German knitting culture is because I never really was exposed to a lot of it. And I'm not even sure about, I know that there are parts of Germany, especially in the South, that have a strong knitting tradition, like Bavarian socks, for example, but I'm not from that part in Germany. And my part, like where I come from, doesn't really have a strong knitting tradition. So I don't think I'm inspired by a lot of German, um, German knitting tradition. German culture in general, I think is a very conflicted and very difficult topic. Um, saying that you're proud to be German, I wouldn't even say that I'm proud to be German. It still feels weird and it feels weird because of our history and our awareness of our history and the terrible, horrible, horrible things that our ancestors did, um, especially around World War II and the Nazi regime. And I think this is why I'm a bit conflicted about German culture in general. We do have a rich tradition, but I feel that sometimes 
all of the tradition is somewhat tainted by by our past if that makes sense at least that's how i feel about it right now i have no idea how that feeling is going to develop but honestly my inspiration and i think you can probably relate to that i draw inspiration from everywhere and because our world especially our knitting world is so global these days with instagram and youtube and podcasts and everything there is just so much out there and so much inspiration to draw from and so I think that's where I get most of my inspiration from, like from all sorts of different places. And there's usually not a specific location tied in with that. I hope that did answer your question, Carmen. I really liked it. And I like thinking about it beforehand and actually figuring out how I feel about it. Alrighty, last part in the making part is shop news. And I'm super excited because I have two super exciting things to share with you. First thing is that Forest Green is back! And I hope you guys are as happy about this as I am because I've been getting a lot of requests for for these bags. I put them on a little hiatus during summer, but it doesn't really, really like so it doesn't really feel like summer, so I thought I might as well bring them back. So back they are. And they are made to order, which is why they have a little bit longer processing time. And currently they come in small and they come in the sweater size. So this is perfect for a pair of socks. This is perfect for a sweater. I am working on coming up with a medium size. So that hits the shop in a few weeks, maybe, maybe two months or so. Um, listings are updated on Etsy. You can get them now. Yay! The second super exciting thing with relation to shop news is something that you might have seen on Instagram already and it's a collaboration that is dropping next week on August 3rd. I've teamed up with the amazing Verena from the Wool Club and Saskia from Ovis etc. again. We did a collaboration earlier this year on a cowl pattern and this time we actually collaborated on a kit for a pair of socks. They're called the Ovis etc. socks and I'm going to insert a little picture here. They were designed by Verena and they're gorgeous. And they were knit in Saskia's yarn in the Kempish Hide Shop sock, which is 85% Kempish Hide Shop and 15% polyamide. And let me show you what's in the kit. In the kit, you get, of course, the pattern, you get the yarn, and you get a magic project bag from me, a sock size project bag that has my usual project bag design but a unique color it's this gorgeous cotton wool blend in this like dark gray and i love it and you know what else i love how the zipper goes with the yarn isn't that gorgeous you get in terms of the yarn you can choose between two um let me figure out how to best show you between two options so you either have a lighter main color and a darker contrasting color for heels cuffs and toes or exactly the other way around with a darker main color and a, and the lighter contrasting color now this is called the clay licht set and this is called the clay donker set so this is dark clay this is light clay and they are gorgeous honestly gorgeous each set contains 80 grams of the um, of the main color and 20 grams of the the, uh, the contrasting color, and more than enough to knit yourself a pair of socks. This yarn is super special to me because it's non superwash, which is extremely rare for uh, for a sock yarn, as you know, and it's grown and spun in Holland. And I'm just in love with these colors that Saskia came up with for the collaboration. So hitting the shelves of her and my Etsy shop next week, August 3rd. Get yourself one of those. For the exact shop update time, follow me on Instagram. I will be announcing that sometime later this week. Alrighty, recommendation time. I have another book recommendation. What can I say? I've been reading a ton and uh, there are no words to describe how I feel about this book. No words, trust me. A Little Life, Hanya Yanigahara, and the 
this book is everything. It tears your heart out and it's so good. It's 720 something pages and I read this in four days. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop. And I don't think there is an appropriate way to describe how it makes me feel without tearing up because it's really good. It's really, really good. It goes so it goes so deep but on such a, in such a gentle way and sometimes in such a brutal way and I can only recommend it. It's a story of four friends, four guys who end up moving to New York and it tells their story essentially from age, let's say age 20 until age, I don't know, 60 or something. Um, it sounds boring. It's absolutely not. It's the best thing that I've read all year. Go get it. But be prepared. It's tough. Okay. With this segue, we're now on to business and the second part of this podcast, which is all about how to run a creative business, which also can be tough sometimes. But luckily right now, it's quite good. Tough in terms of how much I work, but I love the work that I do and yeah. Um, I don't really have a lot to tell you about my uh, the things that I've been working on this week. It's still the same. A lot of last, like la not last minute work. It's not last minute work, but like the last steps in the work on our first book. What's for making stories? And we're working with our tech editor currently on editing the patterns for the second book for Breeze. Um, this is a lot of fun. I also am still in the middle of running my Instagram mini class beta test, which is amazing. Oh, and speaking of Instagram, I released a new freebie, which is a two page Instagram planner that I completely forgot to print out, but maybe I'll insert a picture. I will for sure insert the link into the show notes because I have had a lot of people ask me about how I plan my Instagram and how to make Instagram a little bit more enjoyable again. And I do quite a lot of, not quite a lot of planning, but I do plan my Instagram, which is amazing because it takes away the stress of thinking about what to post about now. So um, go get that planner if you're feeling a little bit stressed or frustrated with Instagram right now and try it out. I've had really, really good feedback about it. I've had quite a few people comment on it on Instagram and be like, hey, I love this. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Last but not least, if you've enjoyed this video and also want to know more about sort of my work as a creative boss coach, might I suggest you check out my Patreon, which is where I post monthly creative boss tutorial videos. I posted the first one about how to track income and expenses and I'm going to record the next one next week. And if you are pledging before the end of July, you can even vote what I'm going to be talking about in my next tutorial video. So. I think this is a great way to get to know me a little bit better, get to get a little bit of help for your creative business without committing to a full-fledged consulting with me or coaching with me. And yeah, I would be really happy if you checked it out. I think this was everything for today. It was. Again, a shorter episode, which I really enjoy and I heard you guys enjoyed it too, right? Let me know in the comments below if you prefer the shorter or the longer episodes. I'm super flexible and I'd be happy to adjust to whatever you like best. Also, make sure you hit subscribe if you like this, if you want to get notifications and um, like whenever I upload a new video and give me a thumbs up just so you, just so I know that you liked it. Talk to you very soon. Bye. Thank you.